over the past few episodes, you've discussed purgatory. Obviously, in November, we talked about purgatory and the soul. Right. Mm -hmm. If purgatory is to refine and, quote unquote, purify our spirits slash souls, then why would we ever pray for those in purgatory or get them indulgences? They actually need this time and purification. Many thanks. So what about something like that? Yeah, no, it's a great question. There's two basic reasons for this. The number one reason is, of course, you want that person <clears throat> who is there in purgatory to have it as you know non-painful as possible, if I can put it that way. It's not going to be a cakewalk in purgatory because uh, remember last time when I was describing how you have to become kind of detached mm -hmm. from things that you're very attached to. Well, to give those things things up is a real discipline and it's a real task and it can involve a lot of pain and a lot of changing of life habits and of course what we're praying for is that this person will in some sense be able to cooperate with the grace of Christ more and more easily so that you know there won't be you know that degree of, of real pain in, in the detachment now God of course is going to do everything that he can uh, to help those people out and of course um, you know at the end of the day um, you know, the person has to cooperate, right? God's, the whole point of purgatory is God's not going to violate their freedom. He's going to draw them closer to himself through their freedom until they can finally kind of let go. Uh, I don't know if you if people uh, in, the, in the audience have read that, uh, you know, the, the great divorce there, uh, you know, C.S. Lewis, you know, the, the bus ride that goes up from hell to heaven and kind of, mm -hmm. you know, this little like purgatory state outside of heaven and all these people, you know, come out of the bus and, uh, you know, relatives and friends who try and talk them into coming to heaven, but they all find an excuse to go back to hell. But the, the one um, kind of incident that, that's interesting that kind of resembles in a sense uh, purgatory is the angel comes uh, an angel comes down and meets this one guy who has a lizard uh, on his shoulder obviously kind of a, a representation symbol of the devil but it's really kind of devilish inordinate attachments mm -hmm. and of course you know the, the the person has kind of grown fond of, of, of the lizard because it has deceived him and, and so uh, we see you know uh, you know during the, the the discourse you know the guy's real intentions he wants to go to heaven he wants to see God he he wants to be with the angel you know and and the angel says the only thing you have to do is let me have the lizard and the lizard of course is going no 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 <laughs> this guy's deceiving you completely let me give you the full truth here. Mm -hmm. And of course, chatter, 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 chatter. And he's trying to, you know, and the guy goes, well, I'm not so sure. He seems to be speaking. There. And the angel is, keeps on saying, let me have him. I assure you, he's not speaking the truth. You have to believe me. Just give him to me. And of course, finally, the guy goes, okay. The minute he gives his free assent, the angel just rips that lizard, which of course has its talons, you know, right in that guy's shoulder. Of course, he cries out in pain okay. when that, when that uh, you know, attachment is detached. But at the end, he throws the lizard out of the ground, turns into a stallion, and he rides off to heaven. Now, it's, it's kind of, in a sense, <clears throat> you know, an allegorical way of talking about what happens to us. You know, that there, there is pain in detachment. There's just no doubt about that. There's deception in detachment. And we're going to have to come to grips with it. What we pray for is, first of all, that it not take a long time. And second of all, that it not be painful, you know, to, uh, to the person, that they cooperate in their freedom as quickly as possible and as non-stubbornly as possible so that, of course, God working through their freedom can, you know, finally complete the process of purification where they can then go riding, as it were, mm -hmm. on a stallion up to heaven. Right. So that would be the, the reasons for the prayer. So keep praying. You know, God's not going to violate their freedom, but he is going to try and uh, do this uh, as expeditiously as possible and as non-painfully as possible. And, you know, God likes to be asked, right. uh, pray for that grace so that the person uh, that you love will cooperate. And there's an aspect of that, too, in the fact that the person doing the praying gets something out of that. I mean, that's 
the fact that they take the time no, well, and offer those prayers is important for their own salvation, right? Absolutely, because of course that's an act of, of generosity when they're offering their sufferings for that person. That's you know the in in the you know in the imitation of Jesus. That is the same self-sacrificial gift of love that Jesus offers to the Father to help that person, and all those things absolutely help the prayer, the mm -hmm. petition er, and of course uh, probably shortens their. A time uh, in in purification or purgation. Mm -hmm. So uh, just as they say, uh, uh, keep praying because that's uh, uh, you know what the church teaches. And of course, if you look at the Catechism of the Catholic Church, when they're talking about purification and purgatory, uh, you know those points are 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 made as well.